them little misses and more of the Mr. Men. It's Emily's this time, Emily Smith's card. Happy birthday, Emily. For today, eh? Lots of love from Mummy and Daddy and Charlotte. A little smiling character, little Miss Giggle. Happy birthday, Emily. Hope you have a terrific day. Fold this one out. Ah, oh, it's a big card. Nice, though. I think it might be Thumper the Rabbit. Here to wish, Philippa, a happy third birthday for today. This comes with lots of love from Mummy, Auntie Ellie, Uncle Ian, Barry and Grandpa. Happy birthday, Philippa. They don't tell us Philippa who, but I'm sure you know who you are. A very happy third birthday. Here's Humpty Dumpty on the wall. And this says, please wish my sister Michelle a very happy third birthday today, with lots of love from her brother Paul, who's nine, mummy and daddy, nanny and granddad, and her two cats, Tanya and Tootsie, and she lives in Kingsbury in London. If it's your birthday, a very happy birthday, play bus. Why stop? Stop what? Which stop? Where? Stop here? What for? Why? Who's there? Hello, Pop! There. Hello. Hello. Seem to be an awful lot of things to eat around here. Why? In the lost property? Look at this. Bunch of grapes. What are these? Oh, those are mine. What are they? Well, it's my toothbrush and toothpaste. It's for cleaning my teeth. Why? Well, so that I don't get toothache. Why? Well, because I don't like having sore teeth. Why? Well, because if you don't clean your teeth, you get toothache. Toothache? Toothache. What's that? Well, it's when your teeth hurt. Why? Because you don't clean your teeth. What? Stop! <laughs> Sorry, Pop. Right. Now, what have we got here? Oh, apples. Ooh, they feel nice on your teeth. Put those under A. Ah, for apple. Ah, biscuits. Yeah, they're not quite so good for your teeth, are they? Hmm, put that under B. B, for biscuit. Whose are these? Ah, those are mine. What are they? Well, they're chocolates. <laughs> they were given to me by the people who made them. I know they're rather, um, rather naughty, but... Mm. They are rather nice. <laughs> Have a look at this. I'd like to lick my fingers. Ooh. <laughs>
Don't know what he sees in these, really. Whoa! What's that terrible noise? Can you see who's making that? No. No. Oh. It's you. Just cleaning my teeth after eating all those chocolates. Can I ever go? No. Why not? <laughs> no teeth? Well, birds don't have teeth, do they? Oh. Hey, why? Come back with that. Bother. That reminds me of something. You heard this story once about an enormous toothbrush. Now, who used it? Oh, yes. Clive. Here he is. Clive Crocodile was sitting in the sun cleaning his teeth. He had lots and lots of teeth, so his toothbrush was enormous. Before long, Clive's arms started to ache. Oh, this toothbrush is too heavy, he sobbed. But whatever can I do? I've got to clean all my teeth or I'll get toothache. That's even worse than arm ache. I've got so many teeth. The tears ran down Clive's face. Perhaps you've heard of crocodile tears. They're pretend tears. But even though Clive was a crocodile, his tears were real. Just then, Dr Dringle came along. He was a very clever doctor and solved all sorts of problems in a very special way. Clive Crocodile told him his problem. Oh, I'll either have to have arm ache or toothache, he sniffed. I'm so unhappy. Dr Dringle began to tingle. He reached for his stethoscope. He plugged the ear tubes in and held the main tube to his head. I hear an idea, said Dr Dringle. Follow me, Clive Crocodile and bring your enormous toothbrush. Clive hurried along behind the doctor. Soon they came to a big tree with lots of low branches. Dr Dringle took some string out of his little black bag and told Clive to tie his enormous toothbrush onto one of the branches of the tree. You can take your teeth to the brush instead of taking the brush to your teeth, chuckled the doctor. So now Clive clings onto the branch of the tree and rubs his teeth up and down the enormous toothbrush. After he's cleaned his top teeth, he turns upside down, clings onto the branch with his tail and cleans his bottom teeth. Clive Crocodile doesn't get arm make anymore. He cleans all his teeth so he doesn't get toothache either. But let's hope he never gets tail ache, eh? I'll get it. Hello. Why birds stop? Play bus. Oh, I see, madam. Yes, you've lost some fruit. Oh, well, um... Oh, look, why... Do you think you could keep the noise on? Mm. I, I'm on the phone. Some fruit. Oh, fruit! Yes, we have found some fruit, yes. Yes, it was all over the bus. Oh, I see. He was taking it to his granny and the basket broke. Oh, I'm sorry about that. Well, look, I'll tell you what I'll do. Look, why will you please keep that noise down? Mm. This is a customer on the phone. Mm. Uh, I'm sorry about that, madam. Just a bird. Yes. Now, look, um, what I can do is I can collect all the fruit together and then drop it by on my way home. Yes, don't you worry. Bye. Why? What? Do you think you could collect all that fruit together so I can take it with me when I go home? That should keep her busy. What shall I put it in? 
What should you put it in? Ah, oh, that's a point. I don't know. You'll think of something. Huh. What's this then? Ooh. So, if I go up round by the dot stop and then mm. I could mm. go down... Oh, look, quiet while I'm trying to concentrate. Mm. Now, and then I could go round mm. there. What is it? Mm. Uh, what's this? Mm. How to make a decorated box. Oh, I see! For the fruit! Yes. Ah, very clever, why? I know. Right, what do we need? A box. A box, right. A box. I don't know, I did see a box... Ah, oh, under the map. Here we are, then. One box. Paper. Paper. Is that a bit of paper, do you think? No. No. Long strip. A long strip. How's that? Right. And glue, scissors and colours. Glue, scissors and colours. So there's some colours and scissors. Nice colours. Yep, we've got some nice colours there. Good. And music while we work. Or rather, while I work. Ah, cheek. OK, then. Right. What do we have to do? Glue the box. Glue the box. All around. Right. Plenty of this. Tune. Very nice, this. Right. Now what? Uh, put the paper around. Put the paper around, and we have to have a, a bit over the edge, don't we? At the top. That's it. Put that down carefully there. And then fold that. Hey, get your beak out of the way, Sorry. why? <laughs> Just hold on a minute. Right, now help me stick this down. That's it, all the way along there. And there. Oh, you're coming in useful, aren't you, Why? I know. Yeah, you're a good bird today. Come on, a bit more. <laughs> well done. Wow. You could try doing this bit with your beak. That's all feathery. You've got to make some... Frilly bits all the way around the edges. That's pretty. Mm. Just like the top of your head, isn't it, Why? It's all nice and frilly. <laughs> How's that? Nice. Now, I think if we bend it like that... That's it. ..then it'll make it... Oh, I'm sorry. I hurt all you. Right. And uh, make it look quite frilly. And now for the colours. All together. All together. Well, all, the, all the colours together. That's it. So if I, uh, I just hold them like this. OK. Let's see if this is going to work. Like waves. It's quite difficult to get them all to press down at the same time, isn't it? Yeah. And the last bit. There we are. You've done well. There we are. A nice, pretty basket for the fruit. Thank you. There we are, Why? You can fill it up with fruit. OK. If you've ever nothing to do, you could try making something out of a box. Right. Time for tea. Ooh, I've been looking forward to this. And time for me to tell you about uh, a couple of boys I know. Brian, that's not me, and Ryan. Mm. Mm. That's better. Brian and Ryan were twins. They were brothers, they were boys, and they were bored. We're bored, said Brian. Yes, we are, agreed Ryan. Well, why don't you be laundrymen, suggested Mum, and uh, hang out the washing, or you could be delivery boys and do the shopping. 
We were delivery boys yesterday, said Brian. Yesterday, agreed Ryan. Mum thought hard. I know. How about doing an initiative test? Brian and Ryan looked at each other. Brian quirked his eyebrows. Ryan shrugged. They didn't know what it meant. All right, well, we'll try it, said Brian. And if we don't like initiativing, said Ryan, then we'll stop, said Brian. So Mum explained what they had to do. You must each find three things for me before tea time. Something with a lily on it, something that I like very much, and a wooden door key. Now, off you go. The thing is, you've got to see who can find the best three things. And don't disturb Dad. He's having a snooze in the back garden. So off they went. Right, uh, something with a lily on it, said Brian. Uh, a wooden door key, said Ryan. And something that Mum likes very much. They both finished together. Ryan went straight to his toy box. He had to turn everything out. But finally, he found an old birthday card with a lily on it. He saw Brian outside and he shouted. Shh! yelled Brian. Be quiet! You'll wake up, Dad! He's having a snooze! I was, said Dad, sighing. So Brian explained half about the initiative thing and uh, Ryan explained the other half. Oh, I think I'll do the test with you, said Dad. But I'm going back to sleep. I've already got my three things. Brian and Ryan looked at each other. How could Dad have collected three things already? Oh, well, they shrugged. Grown-ups never did make much sense. And off they went to do some more initiative -ing. They searched all day. And finally, they just managed to collect three things each when Mum came out to do the grand judging. Brian had painted a lovely picture with a lily on it for Mum. She was ever so pleased. And he gave her the little wooden key from his old wooden train set. And now for something that I like very much, said Mum. And Brian pinned Mum's favourite brooch onto her apron. Oh, that's lovely, said Mum. Gave him a great big kiss. Right, Ryan's turn. So Ryan held up the, the old birthday card with the lily on it. And the wooden door key was made from some old twigs and bits of string. It was a bit floppy, but Mum said, well done, Ryan. Now, now for something that I like very much, Ryan giggled. And he picked up Tiger the cat, who struggled crossly. Right, it's Dad's turn now, said Brian and Ryan together. He's playing as well. Is he, said Mum. Right, your three items then, please, sir. Ah, well, that's easy, grinned Dad. And he took out his wallet and he showed them a photo of Mum that he always carried around with him. Now, Mum's name is Lily, so this photo has a lily on it. Mum. And here's the wooden door key. And he took out his front door keys. Brian and Ryan looked at each other and frowned, because the key was made of metal. Ah, ha, ha, but it's a trick question, you see, said Dad. The front door is made of wood. So this is a wooden door key. How about the thing that Mum likes very much, said Brian and Ryan together. Ah, well, that's the easiest one of all, said Dad. And he put his hands on both their heads and he pushed them towards Mum. That's you. Mum likes you two very much. Brian and Ryan thought that was very funny being items themselves. Mum said that they had all won and that there was strawberry cream cake for tea and it was on the table now, but before she had finished, Brian and Ryan had rushed inside because, you see, strawberry cream cake was one of their favourite things. As they were tucking in, they both looked at one another and both silently agreed that, well... It hadn't been such a boring day after all. Did they clean their teeth? Ah, we don't know. What do you think? Time to go. Hmm. Where's my toothbrush? Filed it. Filed it? Where? Under T for toothbrush, of course. Ah, got it. Right, I've got to deliver these. See you. Bye. Cheerio! Bye, Bye Pop! Pop.